Hey, what's up guys? I'm back. Today we're going to be removing the automatic transmission out of my 2005 Mustang GT. If you find this video helpful or just want to follow my progress, like and subscribe. So a few weeks back, before I even started a YouTube channel, I had taken out the center console here. Um, you don't necessarily need to take out the console to remove the transmission, but I did to check the shifter and make sure that's why it wasn't engaging properly. But while I was thinking about it, I figured I may as well do a little overview. So you want to get you a panel tool and pry up underneath this bezel. Okay, it'll pop off. You have four clips there. Be careful so you don't break them. Next, you'll want to lift the e-brake up as far as it will go. You have two Phillips head screws, one on each side. After you take those out, it will come off, but you have six clips underneath. Okay, there's two up here, two here, and two here. So you'll want to pull straight up, prying around the edges till it pops off. And they'll come apart. I'll show you the clips. So you got two up top, two there, and two there. There's the holes, and there they are. So next, you have your cigarette lighter in there. So you can reach through there and undo the connector. Then you have two 10 millimeter bolts that go down in those holes, and you have two seven millimeters, one there, there. Show you what those look like. There it is undo those then you have side panel here side panel here there's four clips that hold them in so you'll want to pry around the edge maybe up top pull straight forward and it'll come off so you got your two up top one in the middle and one on the bottom that one's broke I didn't do it it was like that so next you're going to want to take the whole console and lift it upwards towards the dash while twisting it to get it over this e-brake. Now, it'll take some finesse, but uh, with a little effort, you'll get it. So now we're going to go tackle the exhaust. So what I ended up having to do was taking the angle grinder and putting a slit in the band. Got it on that one too, sorry about the focus. And uh, yeah, I mean, this was just fused, would not come apart. As you can see by the marks here, and you can see it better on this one. I tried taking an air hammer, hitting it, and it wouldn't separate. Now the problem I'm having is I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get this over the axle. I am also having some trouble getting this muffler off along with the other side um, the last guy who did it you can see put some slits in to press the muffler on looks like he also connected this uh, intermediate pipe to the original exhaust to add the muffler on top of that he didn't even have a um, muffler bracket bushing he just had it held on by some wire Connected to the frame here. I cut that off already um, Tried using the old dead blow here <clears throat> to bang it off It's not want to come off uh, I don't want to damage it too bad in case I decide to reuse it um, I'm just worried that the whole exhaust isn't going to slide out over the axle with the muffler attached I'm gonna give it a shot. We'll see and another thing I noticed, see that, that wire back there? The exhaust melted it. And uh, I'm not quite sure how bad it is. Um, once I get everything off, I'll take a better inspection of it, see if it can be saved or if I'll have to splice new wires in. I'm pretty sure what it is is in the trunk here. 
I think it's a fuel shut off in case you get rear-ended. My other Mustang has one in the trunk also. All the wiring seems to lead to it. And then to the fuel tanks. I won't know till I have some more room to trace everything down. Um, this one doesn't look like you need to put cuts in it to press the muffler on. Does have another intermediate pipe, which an exhaust clamp was not on. It's just shoved on there. Um, thank God the mufflers had one on. I think that's part of the problem though. You can see the indentation there from the clamp and yeah it's just going to be hell to remove that whole exhaust with this muffler attached without a lift okay so what i ended up doing was taking a reciprocating saw and cutting the pipe as close as i could to the muffler and that worked out way better than trying to pull it now since this didn't have any hangers on it I was trying to hold it and cut it off at the same time and of course when it finally broke free it bounced off the ground and smashed my toe which sucked but uh, you know you do and you learn so in the future I will definitely be strapping or at least bungeeing the muffler before I try something like that again now I need to crawl underneath and try to pull that through. Let's give it a shot. I also removed the battery and the battery tray. I did that to get access to the exhaust manifold so I could lube the bolts up and the O2 sensor, hopefully give it an easier time coming out. Um, I believe it was three eight millimeter bolts that go through the bottom of the tray. I'm gonna try to pull this through. You know, I did some of the louder stuff off camera just because, uh, you know, it's loud, safety. I'm only one man. It might be easier if I take the drive shaft off first. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to mark the relationship of the flange and the drive shaft. Um, it's pretty cold, so my marker isn't working right now. So I got a few tools to make a scribe, see which one works best. Describe the transmission flange and drive shaft. A little tip for removing the drive shaft since we'll need to have it in park to hold it still to break the bolts free, and then we'll need to have it in neutral to spin the drive shaft. If you get a little tool like this or a pry bar, and pry the shifter linkage cable off like this. Put it in there, pry, and pop it off. Then we can take the shifter linkage, put in its park. We can shift it however we want from down here and don't have to keep coming from inside the car to underneath the car. I mean, this cable's going to have to come off anyways, may as well do it now. Now, anytime you pop this bushing off, it will need replaced. Because as you can see, let me get back on there, if I put it on there, pops off real easy, it doesn't want to hold on. So anytime you take this off, it will need replaced. I left one in so it don't fall. And look at these things. Oh man. The 
because there's some long bolts and they did not want to come out very easy. Even once they were cracked loose, I had to turn and turn and turn. Okay, so that side was six, six point ten millimeter bolts. This side is four 12 millimeter 12 point bolts. I'm going to go ahead and take these off off camera because it's just too hard to film. The bolts had some yellow thread locker on them. Here you go. There's one of them. Four 12 point 12 millimeters. Now next I have two 13 millimeter bolts holding this sway bar. And then up in there there's also two 13 millimeter bolts. I went ahead and pulled the exhaust out to get your drive shaft out. This bracket is mounted to the body by this bolt and there's this spacer that is between the bracket and the body. The bolt goes on the outside. Here's that one right there. I finished undoing the bolts on this side, gave it a few taps to break it free. Then I let it set and rest on the exhaust. And now, remember, I left one bolt in on that side to hold the drive shaft up. <clears throat> then I came up here, undid the bracket, rotated sides, you know, loosening them little by little till it came down. It came down, rest on the exhaust. Then I went and took that bolt the rest of the way out, gave it a few taps to break it free, just light taps. Pulled forward towards the transmission, it broke free, grabbed it with both hands, pulled it through from out from under the exhaust, laid it on the ground. Made sure the flanges are pointed upwards and slowly, carefully dragged it out from underneath. Now, on a side note, I noticed when I was taking these bolts out that they were wet and they smelled like differential fluid. Now look in here, you can tell it's wet in there, so it's a good thing I did this because that uh, companion seal, or whatever you call it, is obviously leaking. Also, when I was making my marks to mark the relationship of the drive shaft and the differential, I did not mark my mark all the way. My, I finally got my paint marker working, so I came back and marked it. So, yeah. Now, you don't necessarily have to make the marks. Um, I think it's a good habit to get into, to mark the relationship of whatever you're taking apart. Now, as long as you're not separating the two-piece drive shaft, you'll probably be okay. If you separate it, you definitely need to mark the relationship I do it out of habit, so. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is disconnect the O2 sensors. There's four of them, two of them up top, two connect to the bottom of the transmission. I'll try to get this on camera, see if you can see it. There's a little bung on the driver's side exhaust manifold. That O2 sensor, you don't have to worry about since it's uh, connected to the manifold. Now this one on the passenger side, if you remove the battery box and the battery, you have access to it. You can see the wire down there. Sorry about the lighting, I'm trying to get... It's tucked on top of the bell housing of the transmission. So there's a little ear on the bell housing that has a clip. Now if you pull forward on it, set this light up correctly. Okay, so if you pull forward on it, uh, it'll disconnect. Here, let me get the light down in there. There we go. And now, see that? It's not connected to the top of the transmission anymore. And there's a little tab you have to push on. try to separate it okay the upper one was a pain I ended up having to squeeze a screwdriver in there and uh, press on the clip 
Well, I twist this screwdriver to get them to separate. Now these ones won't be nearly as bad. You got your little clip there. Push down. There we go. This one clip pulled right off. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take this support bar, sway bar, whatever you wanna call it off. Um, you have two 15 millimeter <clears throat> bolts on each side. Okay, so now that we have the O2 connectors disconnected, I'm going to start loosening up the exhaust bolts to the manifold. And you can see one up there. The other one's right there. And on this side, got one right there. And the other one is right there up top above that O2 sensor. They're all fairly accessible. I already cracked them loose and they took some He-Man strength. <laughs> I mean, you can see how uh, rusty that manifold is. And I had soaked them twice in PB Blaster. Um, so you got two 15 millimeter bolts on each manifold. Like I said, I already cracked them loose. And you know, out of everything on a car, exhaust work is my least favorite. So I'm not going to take them all the way off because I don't want it to fall on me. I'm going to loosen them all the way to the tip. Oh. Alright, we're switching to the passenger side. Get them all the way loosened up. Then we'll worry about taking them all the way off. One more thing, I don't have to worry too much about the exhaust falling on me because these hangers actually go into the transmission mount. See, on both sides there. I can hold it up and then I will spray some silicone spray in here to lube them up so they'll slide out. Of this rubber easier um, the rubber is pretty flexible might not be that hard but you almost have enough room to take this transmission out without removing this part of the exhaust but because these hangers go into the mount you kind of have to I mean I suppose you could get your transmission jack put it under the pan hold it up remove the mount the bolts to the mount um, and slide the mount off but we're already this far may as well take it off so I loosened all the bolts so they were almost off but still holding on then I came up here and wrapped a bungee cord around attached it to the shock tower holding it up so this side actually has no bolts in it right now that bungee's holding it up. Okay. And one of the bolts did not want to come off. Sorry about the focus. See, it was almost there. But it, it didn't want to do that last little bit. And the stud snapped. So yeah, I hate exhaust work. There's one bolt on left on the driver's side. The easiest bolt to get to, I left that on. I figure once I take that off, you know, I can let it down and take the bungee off. I still have the back end held in by those uh, bushings with the hangers. So yeah, you know, doing the exhaust work by yourself isn't fun. It definitely is one of my least favorite things. So I got them pulled out. No problem, really wasn't too bad. They're not that heavy since the exhaust is split in half like that. Um, while I was inspecting them though, peek in here. Not sure, I'm trying to get a good angle. 
See that? I'm pretty sure they're not supposed to look like that. So, I'm pretty sure the cats are bad. Now this one, when I look in there, see that one looks like it's broke all the way through. Unless if Ford really formed them like that. I mean, it almost looks like it's folded over up there. I don't know. I'll figure it out later. Okay, so now I'm going to be removing the starter. Looks like we have two 10 millimeter bolts. One right here and one right here. So after taking those two bolts out, starter didn't want to come off. It turns out there's three. So if you look right there on top, you can see my extension on it. It's just a bit recessed, so I couldn't see the bolt head. Now, I'm making it work how it is, but if you planned on taking off the exhaust manifold, that would definitely give you more room, or even the tire. See how I'm getting to it? It's through this little, right here, this little area right there. I'll give you enough room to get your ratchet in there on top of it. You just kind of got to feel around to get to it. But again, if you took the tire off, you'd be able to see better. And the uh, exhaust manifold off, you would definitely be able to get to it, no problem. So I'm going to drain the transmission. It's a 22 millimeter bolt, the outer bolt. There's an inner bolt in here that's a Torx bolt for filling the transmission up. And when I'm finished with that, I'll disconnect the transmission cooler lines. Okay. Move the pan a little bit. Um, it doesn't look too bad. There's two rubber lines down there by the AC clutch. I went ahead and clamped the return and feed line off so transmission fluid doesn't pour all over the place. Okay, so I let it drain till it was dripping. Then I hand tightened the plug back on. Now, our transmission cooler lines are 19 millimeter. You see, there's two of them up there. Um, they are hard lines, but they lead to soft lines so you can move them out of the way. Now, there is a bracket back there that's holding them in. That's a 15 millimeter. You see it right there on the motor mount? So we gotta undo that so we can move them. So we have another problem. That stud right there, that holds the bracket on for the transmission cooler lines. Um, I got it to turn but it turns out the whole stud is coming out. And as you can see, that's one of the studs that holds the engine mount on. I hate it when they do that. I mean, Ford does that with a lot of stuff. They'll uh, put grounds and stuff on an engine mount stud and just throw another nut on it. And they just seize on there and they're a pain to get off. I had a problem with my other Mustang, the um, body ground cable. I couldn't get it off and ended up having to cut a bolt and make a new stud. I have a piece of wood back there. Now let me hop out of here and I'll show you through the wheel well. See that? So I happened to find some weird 13 millimeter wrench and put a block of wood against the block. I'm able to twist that nut. I'm not quite done because the tip's so rusty. I mean, my arms are on fire from twisting that thing little bracket there that holds the cooler lines. See, there's a little metal tab that bends around the back. So I'm not really sure how you get the cooler lines out of there. Like I said, 19 millimeter. As you can see, I already uh, loosened up, my bad, this, the bottom flare nut. 
did that. I also went ahead and popped the heat shield that went right here off. Just two 10 millimeter bolts. So, get up there. You know, I popped the heat shield off just to give me a little bit extra room because my wrench was banging against it. Oh, there's not a whole lot of room. So I want to give you guys an idea what I had to do. And it sucked. So, this big bolt right here screws into the casing of the transmission. The flare nut screws into that, compresses on the transmission cooler line. That's a 26 millimeter. I didn't have one, so I had to go to the store. I could not find a 26 millimeter flare nut wrench. So I got this big boy, 26 millimeter. But the problem is, see that? The other line and nut is in my way of getting on it. So I had to twist it just right to where I could barely get this wrench on two sides. There's no way I could get it all the way on and then slide my 19 millimeter behind it and thank god it worked i was able oops i was able to get it off um i got lucky really i don't know how else to do it because i can't pull this line out so i mean i guess if you take this line out that'd probably give you enough room if not you'd have to take this this nut off so I had taken the driver's side tire off to give me more access. You're going to want to come around to the front of the transmission and you have two 13 millimeter bolts that hold this cover on. Take those out and give you access to the back of the flex plate. And you have some 15 millimeter nuts that hold the torque converter to the flex plate. You're going to want to take a Sharpie or a marker and mark the relationship of the flex plate to the torque converter so when you put it back together it goes back together the same way you have this rubber plug in there it's uh, pretty hard to get out but that little window is what gives you access to the nuts to take the torque converter off if you come up here by the crank you can get your ratchet on it it's an 18 millimeter bolt as you can see, the sway bar is kind of in your way, but there's plenty of room to get a ratchet and spin the crank. Now, as you're spinning it little by little, you want to be watching in that window. Like I said, there's four 15 millimeter nuts, and as you turn it, you can take them off one by one. Okay, so now we're going to remove everything we can that's connected to the transmission. A lot of it we won't be able to get to till we drop it down a little bit, but we can do some stuff like this. You'll want to take a flathead, pry it in there, and that will come off. Okay, then you have this clip push in on the tab. stuck on there. I need the screwdriver for that too. There we go. Okay. And then I know there's a few more electrical connectors towards the top that we won't be able to disconnect until we drop the transmission down. I'll take this heat shield off like I did with the other side. It's two 10 millimeters, one down here. And one up here. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off just to give me a little bit more room to disconnect the connectors and everything I need to get to. Okay. So now that we have the heat shield off, this harness here needs popped out panel tool the harness is also connected 
to the bracket further up there. It's kind of hard to see. Um, let me see if I can get to it. It's barely hanging on. There we go. Disconnect the shift cable from the transmission. This bracket right here holds the cable on. It's uh, two 13 millimeter bolts. One there, one up top, and it's released. See how that shift cable goes on top of it? This, you'll want to get a panel tool and pop it out. Here's the linkage I was talking about. So it goes up there and hooks on that ball. But see, now that we undone that bracket, the whole shift cable, now since we already disconnected that, is only connected right up here. If we take a pick, there's a little tab right there and one on the other side. So if we take a pick, and, oh, we might have to come from this side, yep, come from the back, show it like that. So here's the whole shift cable. Like I said, you have a tab there and a tab there. I had to take it all the way off, off camera, because it took two hands to get uh, another pick on the back side of that bracket to push this tab out so I could pull it off. Now you don't have to remove the shift cable all the way, but I mean, this is the only thing that was holding it in. So you take that off and you can get all this out of your way. Okay, so now what you wanna do is get your transmission jack and get it underneath your transmission. Um, you know, some people use a regular jack. Uh, it's best and safest to use a transmission jack. In this one, you can angle it however you want. Since in the Mustang, the only thing holding the engine up is the two engine mounts and the transmission mount, I went ahead and took my floor jack and put a block of wood underneath the oil pan. Now, I use a block of wood to distribute the weight so it doesn't damage the pan. It's just an extra precaution because once we take this transmission off, um, the engine is going to want to sag backwards. And by doing this, it'll help keep it up straight. Two 18 millimeter right here, two 18 millimeter on the other side, and then a 13 right in the middle. We're going to go ahead, jack it up, take some tension off the mount, do the 13 first. Okay, so there's seven 13 millimeter bolts holding the bell housing to the engine. The two top ones are the ones that are real hard to get to. So if you tilt the transmission back as far as you can until you can see the top two bolts, you may be able to see that one in the right hand corner. You may be able to get to it from here from here now the problem is there's not a whole lot of room and they're going to be on there tight so to crack them loose at least i have to do something like this get as many extensions as you can and you'll come from all the way back here okay You see them? You got both of them there at the top. So you crack them loose from here, and then you can go in from the wheel well to uh, take them off all the way. And once you do those top two, you can take the rest out. Here's one of the bell housing bolts. I went ahead and took both the top two bolts all the way out. And when you're done with that, you can go ahead and jack the transmission back up 
to even it out so there's not so much tension on the engine mounts and the uh, area between the bell housing and engine. After you do that, you go around, crack all the remaining bolts loose, and then slowly take them out one by one. Pro tip, so you don't get your bolts mixed up, take a piece of cardboard, draw a diagram, poke some holes in it, and uh, put the bolts in it. Okay, now that I got all the bolts out, I'm gonna separate the transmission from the engine. Um, so I'm gonna have to raise and lower the jack and give it a little shake and jiggle until it separates. Um, I gotta be careful though, so the torque converter doesn't fall out. In the book, it says to use a pair of walking pliers and clamp them on the bell housing. Uh, I'm guessing so it'll catch the torque converter if it falls. Um, let me see here, do a little bit of adjusting. Okay. And there we go, we got her out. So I had to do a bunch of it off camera because this wiring harness and the clips that held it in were probably one of the worst experiences of my life. <laughs> I swear to God, I probably spent, I don't know, two hours dicking with this stuff. So, here we go. So, this and this, for one, see how it's like pressed on? I could not get these off panel tool, nothing. So I ended up having to cut them, but that was after I tried and tried and tried to get them off. Um, you know, I guess I'm an optimist. Then, these clips. Okay, so you got this one that's on the very top towards the front. Very hard push button. I mean, I could not get it off. Then you got this one that's toward the, the top in the middle. Again, super hard. Couldn't get it off. Then this one that's towards the top in the back. Um, this one was a little bit easier, but it was still extremely hard. Then you have this thing. Not quite sure what it is, but where it goes is right in there. And it's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds it down. Um, as you can see, look, the 10 millimeter goes all the way through it. And because of how close it is in there, I could not get a ratchet on it. So I had to use a 10 millimeter wrench. And even the wrench, there wasn't very much room to turn it. So I had to do it little by little. Then, why I couldn't pull it out at first um, when I separated it and I was pulling it and it seemed like it wanted to pull. I don't know if I'll be able to get this on camera, but on, on the top of the bell housing, um, towards the front, there's like one of these, right here, these plastic push clips um, to this main wiring harness. Um, Yeah, you can't see it because it's still stuck to the top. I mean, it took finesse and finesse. I had to, ended up having to take a razor blade and cutting it off. So, here's the main wiring harness. I had to take my uh, panel tool and pop this out. Then, like reach my whole arm in here and there wasn't room to get a tool wasn't room to do anything to get that um, push clip out so I ended up thank God could hold a razor blade in my hand and just kind of cut at the tape until it gave way and finally it let go and I was able to drop it out so yeah horrible experience I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here 
I have to figure out some way of getting this out from underneath the car. My jack stands just aren't tall enough. I measured the bell housing. It's 17 inches plus you have the height of the jack. So I went online and ordered some 6 ton jack stands that go up to 23 inches. You know a lot of people online make it seem glamorous to work on cars. It really isn't. It's frustrating, especially when you don't have the right tools or you're having trouble getting something apart. Anyways, let me know in the comments whether you think I should fix this tranny or manual swap it. Like and subscribe. Peace out.